What's this? Among the books on the middle shelf lay a strange metal apparatus. I've got to check this out. Good evening. Please stand by for a message from the Council of the Dimensions. It is the duty of the Council of the Dimensions to inform you that the dimension in which you are located is about to implode. The causes of the impending implosion are not at the Council's disposal at this time. The implosion is a process that is the opposite of the expansion of your dimension, which we have been monitoring since one of the Big Bangs, and its outcome will be the total destruction of all organic and inorganic material in your universe and in adjacent universes as well. Sounds pretty bad. It sure is. Hey, you talk! I sure do. Whoa! Say, are you serious? Very serious. Everyone you know will die. Life as you know it will be no more. Every child... Okay, I get the general picture. Is there a way to stop this, uh, implosion? There is. Listen to the rest of the message. There is only one man who, with his magical powers, can put a stop to the destruction. And that's me! Shut up and listen. Sorry. The only man who can stop the process is an old dimension traveler named Merlin. The Merlin? Merlin the wizard? Many years ago, there was a great wizard duel between Legend World's Wizard of the North and Merlin. That gruesome battle lasted six days and six nights, in the course of which Merlin and the Wizard of the North employed every spell and incantation in their respective books. Only after six brutal days, in which trees were uprooted, the mountains were blasted off their foundations, infernos raged, and a new breed of toads with one gold plate of tooth came into being, did the battle finally end. To signify his victory, the Wizard of the North exiled Merlin to a dimension he had tailor-made just for this purpose, and smashed Merlin's staff to bits. Scattered among the many dimensions, the fragments of the staff were lost. Your job is to locate the pieces of Merlin's staff, piece them together, and summon him. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You want me, going against my parents' wishes, to desert my grandmother, who I'm supposed to be helping prepare for the holidays, go off on a wild and dangerous goose chase between dimensions, look for pieces of a staff that belongs to Merlin, put them together, and summon him in order to save the world? Uh-huh. Okay. I've already been programmed with the coordinates of the dimensions, in which the members of the Council believe pieces of Merlin's staff may be found. How do I operate you? You look fairly intelligent. Figure it out for yourself. I'll be with you throughout the entire journey. It was dusk as the second Rackinal sun set slowly in the south, bringing upon Domloba's inhabitants one more long, muggy, equatorial night. Our hero finds himself in a room. Quite an ordinary room, if you don't count the overpowering stench of beer and the odd view from the window, and the green alien, who hunkered down in his easy chair watching TV, looks very dissatisfied, if I may say so. This is a Dumlubian VX5000 rifle with hydraulic boosters and an analytical digital viewfinder. The rifle is powered by a triple compressed energy unit. No recharging required. What you're saying is that it's one mean piece of firepower. 
I could use a rifle like this on my interdimensional travels. For self-defense, of course. This is a storage cabinet with a tissue-sensitive lock. The tissue-sensitive lock on the storage cabinet does not recognize you as the owner of its contents. A Busy Boys tape with the hit single, Green and Proud. A Busy Boys tape with the Green and Proud single. When I find a tape player, I'll listen to it. This chair's due for a good upholstery job, if not the junk pile. My sensors indicate that this is a typical inhabitant of Dumbluba. My sensors indicate... No, thanks. Too sweaty for me. Every hour, 30 and a half hours a day. 11 days a week, the same old thing. One measly television station, one cruddy program. The family, that slobbering, sniveling soap. Boring, B-O-R-I-N-G, boring. What's the matter, sir? What happened? Who are you? How did you get in here? I've got this machine here. I wouldn't tell him about dimension traveling. He might not understand. The door was open. <laughs> Never mind. My main problem here is boredom. There's only one station on the tube on this dirty planet, and the one show it airs is a soap opera. <laughs> Fridge and soap. Yeah, well, sometimes even when you've got 40 channels, there's nothing to watch. Uh... The pinup from this month's Dumluba Women magazine. It seems our hero is more desperate for company than I had imagined. This refrigerator is full of frozen food that's seen better days. I'm not really hungry. Besides, I don't think my stomach could take that stuff. This room is in a condition of repulsive disarray. I wouldn't want to touch that. Who knows where it's been? This room could stand a thorough spring cleaning. What a stingy green dude. With all this technology floating around, he could have at least bought himself a color TV. I wouldn't want to bother an alien when he's glued to the tube. Talking to the television is not likely to be of any help. I am almost certain that this part of the room will not respond. Yep, he gets awful lonely at the top, but I'm not at the top yet, and I'm not that lonely. Sheesh, this place is a real dump. Kind of reminds me of my room. This room's full of things I wouldn't want to touch. This room is in a condition... I'm not sure I want to talk to the refrigerator. It might just talk back, you know.